priorities, our main priorities include recognized borders, strengthening non-recognized in the respective decisions of the upcoming I already mentioned during his official visit. I had an honor meeting many of you and those I haven't met before. I'm very glad to welcome you here. This is a special occasion. I'm so pleased that today we are gathered to give a launch of an exciting three-day program that includes cultural events and gives opportunities to experience Georgia beyond the capital and visiting one of the historical, very interesting part of our country. This is the second time we organize such cultural event for the diplomatic corps and the first time with participation of non-resident ambassadors. As a former ambassador, I know quite well how difficult is the job that you are pursuing. That, among many other things, requires maximum understanding the particularities of cultures with all its complexities. I remember one old saying about diplomacy. Sometimes more can be accomplished at one party, I would add at the cultural event, than in many serious conversations. Thus, I'm glad that we have many such interesting events over the days ahead. We will do our best to make three days interesting, pleasant, and memorable. As a starting point, we commence the program with today's presentation about Georgia. At our conference, we are privileged to be joined by the Prime Minister of Georgia, His Excellency Mr. Iragli Garibashvili. I would like to welcome our keynote speakers of this event, Minister of Agriculture, Mr. Shalva Pipia, Deputy Minister of Economy and Sustainable Development, Mr. Babu Najane Lidze, Director of Georgia National Investment Agency, Mr. Georgi Bertaya, Deputy Energy Minister, Ms. Mariam Valishvili, and Head of Georgia National Tourism Administration, Mr. Georgi Sigua. They, including myself, will address you with presentations about foreign policy priorities, economy, infrastructural development, energy potential, and tourism. Before. I would like to pass the floor to the Prime Minister of Georgia, His Excellency Mr. Irakli Garibashvili. Thank you. Thank you. Your Excellencies, dear ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I am happy today to have this opportunity to welcome all of you and speak to such a highly distinguished audience on the occasion of launching a very interesting and useful initiative of the Minister of Foreign Affairs. And I would like to thank the Minister of Foreign Affairs for organizing this event. It is needless to stress the very special role that you, the diplomats of our friendly nations, have been playing in the most critical moments throughout our recent history. Similar to last reception, this meeting is a good occasion to express my gratitude to you and your nations for your partnership and cooperation, especially in one of these most turbulent and important periods in the development of my country. We have demonstrated a good track record of political and economic reforms towards strengthening market-based liberal democracy. Key milestone was the recent parliamentary and presidential elections widely praised as positively unprecedented in the re entire region. We look forward to least to replicate the success at the local elections to be held in a few weeks on June 15th. Another important benchmark of our democratic consolidation was recent constitutional amendment that created a fairer system of checks and balances between the legislative and executive branches aim to build strong parliamentary democracy in our country. We also implemented a number of reforms to strengthen the independence of the judiciary, law enforcement, and penitentiary. The courts are regaining trust and respect of people, which is a fundamental component for any functioning liberal democracy in the world. The Georgian media is, are as free from political pressure as in any other democracy. 
And our efforts are dedicated towards developing labor market and social services, as well as raising the, raising the standards of the local and national governments. In addition to sweeping democracy reforms, Georgia is praised for its economic reforms. Recently, much was done to ensure a free and open economic environment with strong guarantees of private property rights. A number of reforms were undertaken to fully advance economic opportunities. Georgia ranks, I would like to repeat, number eight worldwide for doing a business. And in the first quarter of this year, our economic growth was 7.4%. Our economic success was praised by the international community. And the recent survey of the Heritage Foundation ranked Georgia as the world's 22nd freest country, citing, citing improvement in six out of 10 economic freedom categories, including management of public finances, investment freedom, monitoring freedom and property rights. The same survey ranked Georgia as number 12 out of 43 countries in the European region. And we're all proud of this. In order to boost economic investment in Georgia, several investment funds are already operational and others are planned. Successful funds include the Agricultural Management Fund, which has been supporting companies active, which are active in agricultural production and the Georgian Partnership Fund that supports large-scale investment initiatives. In addition, the Georgian Co-Investment Fund was established recently, which is actively seeking large-scale greenfield and brownfield investment opportunities in the key sectors of economies, such as energy, tourism and hospitality, agriculture and manufacturing. Georgian investment potential offers excellent opportunities. And uh, let, me, let me briefly highlight two. First, Georgian energy sector offers strong and untapped foreign investment. Currently, a uh, country utilizes only 18% of its vast hydropower resources. And Georgian power grid is connected to grids of all neighboring countries. In the first nine months of 2013, Investment in energy sector accounted 20% of the total FDI. Second very strong sector is tourism, where Georgia has one of the highest levels of growth. Especially in 2013, we received 4.3 million tourists. In 2013, this number increased, I'm sorry, in 2012 we received 4.3, and in 2013, the number was increased to 5.4 million. Very famous brands have been investing and are quite well established in Georgia, but there remains a plenty of scope for new suppliers. And our country is uniquely positioned to capitalize on increasing trade flows between Europe and Caspian region. And um, for example, uh, we provide the shortest route between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea regions. Georgia remains a secure route for transit of the Caspian gas, as you well know. Railway connecting Azerbaijan, Georgia and Turkey is nearly completed and will, will further advance the trade of goods throughout the region. And we are investing heavily in road infrastructure and plan to build a deep sea port near Poti. Dear friends, Georgia's democratic improvements, independent judiciary is in conjunction with the favorable conditions for doing business and transport location. It requires an added value with the upcoming sign of the association agreement, including the deep and comprehensive free trade area in late June 2014. It is important to stress the, that the provisional entry into force of the DCFTA in the second half of the year will create conditions to further boost the economy of Georgia. And this brings me to the foreign policy milestone event. The upcoming signing implementation of the association agreement. This year, 
we mark the 10th anniversary of the EU enlargement. All assessments point to success of this historic event. And I am convinced that Georgia can also contribute to the success of the European project. Let me also underline some important recent highlights in the scope of cooperation with the European Union, which was agreed at the unprecedented meeting between the European Commission and the government of Georgia during my, during my recent visit to Brussels just two days ago. Georgia and the European Union finalized the association agenda, a set of jointly agreed priorities for the year, for the period 2014-2016, and that will help prepare Georgia for the successful implementation of the agreement. The European Commission and the Government of Georgia signed a financing agreement for the framework program in support of EU-Georgia agreements to assist with reforms in priority areas necessary for the successful implementation of the agreement. The European Commission also announced additional funding to Georgia in line with the Eastern Partnership's More for More principle in recognition of Georgia's progress towards deep democracy. Your Excellencies, uh, I want to clarify one issue. So we do not view European and Euro Atlantic integration as a phenomenon beneficial only for us. We are taking an active part in the NATO-led International Security Assistance Force in Afghanistan as the largest NATO non-member state and will further participate in post-ISAF operations. Besides that, we already contribute to the EU-led CSDP uh, missions. Among them participate in the EU-led crisis management mission in Central African Republic. And uh, let me also reiterate the main message of my government. We are fully committed to the European and Euro-Atlantic choice. Europe and Euro-Atlantic community are a place where Georgia belongs. And we made it very clear to everyone. We have a clear and strong mandate from our people to take this on this, on this task. Now, also, I uh, want to uh, mention a few words about the uh, situation in Ukraine. Of course, we are deeply concerned regarding the crisis in Ukraine. Of course, we support the political independence and national sovereignty and territorial integrity of, of Ukraine within its internationally recognized borders. Um, our country has uh, very good re relations with our neighbors, such as Armenia, Azerbaijan, Turkey, and Iran. We would like to further develop regional cooperation, and we have a motiva motivation and ambition, I would say, to become a regional hub of networks and initiatives. You are all aware that our government has made significant efforts in, to gradually de-escalate the tension with, you know, with, the, with the Russian Federation. First, when we came into power, we appointed the Prime Minister Special Representative on Relations with Russia and undertook a number of uh, constructive efforts, constructive steps. Russia also gradually started to open its market for Georgian products. Uh, let me also underline that we refused to boycott the Sochi Olympic Games and uh, we cooperated in the security area in the context of the Sochi Olympic Games. And uh, we have we had uh, several meetings uh, with the Russian counterpart. I mean, the, my special envoy for relations with Russia had several meetings with him. And uh, as a result, we observed some progress. And uh, we maintained the stability in the country and in the region. Besides, we see the, that the geostrategic dynamics in the region constantly changes. 
but uh, the Georgian government is exercising strategic patience and uh, following pragmatic policy. We see a strong need to have continued active engagement of our partners and friendly nations in averting any further escalation of the situation in the region. And uh, we're continuing active strategic cooperation with the United States and pursuing intensive and fruitful exchanges at all governmental levels, as well as the non-governmental sector. It is very important for us that um, our relations are developing in a consistent manner in all major directions in line with the U.S.-Georgia strategic charter. Now, we are extending our global reach to the remote regions of the world. We also um, established and deepened our bilateral cooperation with the leading countries of Asia, Latin America and Af Africa. And all these efforts will be further intensified next year. Our Minister of Foreign Affairs is very much motivated and uh, our bilateral ties with our friends and partners such as Australia, Brazil, Canada, China, Cuba, Japan, Indonesia, Malaysia, Mexico to, just, to name just a few will become stronger uh, partners. And um, finally it is needless to say that consistent with constant engagement and support of the democratic nations is an indispensable component of all our efforts guided by the principles of predictability, sustainability and continuity. Your Excellencies, in conclusion, let me reiterate my gratitude on behalf of the government of Georgia and the people of Georgia for your support and endeavors to support our country. And I hope that uh, these three days will be interesting um, and mutually useful to deepen understanding of the complexities and diversities of cultures of our countries. And it will serve the purpose of further strengthening the ground of your professional linkages. I'm honored to welcome all of you and wish you a very interesting and successful program. Thank you very much indeed.